Hi Sagittarius, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're doing really, really well. And this reading is for any sun, moon, or rising Sagittarius sign. So reflection and non-judgment. I want to key in on non-judgment because uh, somewhere along the line, many of us, we automatically judge and it's hard to undo. I think it takes conscious thinking to look at someone for who they are and to leave out all of the extraneous information that you're getting or that you're inferring. To use non-judgment, to be open, to leave behind your bias. It's a real um, challenge to do so sometimes. However, the benefits are profound and when you can just live and let live and when you can be accepting of others and when you come from the place of as it says reflection when you ref look in the mirror and you look at your own life and think about how people may incorrectly judge you they don't know you and often when we when we meet people or even when we have friendships and relationships with people you, we really don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We really don't know the challenges and the depth that they face within their lives. So, uh, you know, to, I think a honorable goal is to try to be fair, to be reasonable, to be honest, to be balanced, instead of coming from a place with a preconceived notion where you already have made up your mind without listening to someone speak or without listening at all, judging right off the bat um, from the hip. Uh, it's a, I think it's a destructive practice. And so to be non-judgmental requires skill and it requires deft handling and to be sharp and to always think about how am I, how am I interacting here? How am I engaging? What am I bringing into this discussion that may not be a positive? And in terms of reflection, you know, uh, I think when we, when you, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you really think about how you live your life, you know, it requires honesty and, um, awareness of self where you can be honest with yourself and you can uh, come from a place that it's um, just very real. So, you know, if you've had a tough time where you've been a bit of a bear, you know, own up to it and then let it go. Every day is a new day. So deal with it and then let it, let it go on. But the hope is, is to try to Try to interact with people just at face value with what you see and how they talk to you and what they bring to the table. Open, honest communication, being authentic, being real, being transparent in many ways. So um, it takes practice, I think, to do so because just because of sometimes when you're brought up and things get into your head and you want to get them out of your head. So it takes time and energy and awareness to be able to do that and awareness of how are you approaching this situation? What are you bringing to this discussion? So very interesting, very deep to think about and to explore. That could probably be a video on its own. So now let's take a look at the spiritual self, uh, emotional self of what these cards can share with us about the emotional component for the week. And it says, listen, you have to be willing to listen if you want to really understand someone. Now is not the time to be offering advice, but to be a compassionate listener. To listen fully and intently means to pay attention, not to just what's being said, but, 
to what lies beneath the words. Sometimes people have a hard time getting things off their chest or telling you about a situation within their life because there's pride involved perhaps or they feel that they, they just can't get it out there. Maybe it's a sense of shame uh, or maybe something fabulous is happening and you're talking with someone who's maybe struggling and so you want to keep it inside. But, you know, to focus and to listen, being an active listener, and we teach students that in third grade, to be an active listener, your eyes are on the speaker, you're not talking, you're not moving, you're just listening and taking it in. It's a simple but highly effective, wonderful um, practice to do, which is to really listen to someone. And ultimately, that can be returned to you, where you can uh, have the benefit of someone listening to you as well. So it's, it's very uh, powerful to be able to stop talking yourself and to take it in whatever your companion or whoever's telling you something or sharing with you experiences, anecdotes, um, hopes, dreams, to be quiet and to listen. There's a lot of power within this and it certainly uh, works in tandem with being non-judgmental and being open and receptive to discussions, discussions that are maybe challenging, discussions that may be joyous, discussions that may be um, emotionally draining. So listen. And let's take a look at the body for the week. Consult a nutritionist. Okay, so this week I turn my eating over to you and ask you to guide me to foods and beverages that taste good, are fulfilling, and support my ideal health and weight. And if you are in a position where you can't afford a nutritionist or you can't, um, you know, have it covered from a health plan or, or what have you, there's so much information online with respect to good uh, with respect to healthy diets. And one of the best places to start is like the U.S. government has some incredible free publications about um, for women in menopause, for women and people in general, uh, really thick books that are very, very helpful, give you sample diet plans, give you the information behind why you need to eat certain foods. And you know, this is a, uh, as, I, as I get articles forwarded to me about, um, was, again, I think I mentioned it last week, of finding Indian gooseberry, that it's one of the most beneficial fruits. You know, to me, someone sends me an article and I investigate it because nutrition is important. Um, whether it's finding medicinal mushrooms, uh, you can get them in tablet form, or you could have a cup of mushrooms every day. They say that that's uh, incredibly helpful to your immune system. So there are all these little pieces of information out there that all you have to do is look for it. Another suggestion would be, uh, in addition to consulting with a nutritionist, is that if you have friends that are really good with their diet, who are eating all the greens and the colorful fruits and vegetables, and lean meats and such, um, or soy products, you know, find out how they do it. Are they cooking their foods on the weekend? Are they meal prepping? Are they shopping fresh? Or, you know, what is it uh, that they're doing that makes them successful? Because it takes time to plan accordingly for food and to eat well. It takes time to sit down to think about what you're going to cook for the week, um, you know, what you're going to bring to work. And um, it's, it's, again, nutrition feeds the cells, it feeds your brain, and giving it crummy food or unhealthy food is not in your best interest. And so to find balance 
you have to feed your body right. You have to do things in moderation. If you like to drink, you know, have a drink, but don't overdo it. If you like French fries, you know, you don't have to restrict French fries, just limit the amount of French fries you want in your life. And again, with coffee, <coughs> my cup of tea here, um, with coffee, some reports say coffee is fantastic, other reports say limit the amount that you have, caffeine is detrimental, you know, you can find source data on all nutrition and then you make your decisions in, for your lifestyle and how you can make it work for you. But, and again, uh, but again, I would say to make wholesale changes to totally turn your diet upside down in one or two days may not be the best road to success. But if you do one small thing for the week, like um, pass by the chocolate chip cookies or the candies, and with um, Halloween in the U.S. coming up, it's like try not to have the candies at home and, and snacking on them because they add up. So, you know, there's a lot. Just So this is a week. Pay attention to your diet. Do some meal prepping. Look online. There are many free websites that have great skinny meals that, where they've made them healthy and delicious. So now I'd like to pull a card as a practice area in addition to practicing listening and thinking about your diet and reflecting and being non-judgmental. Signs from heaven. Thank you, heaven, for sending me reminders of your presence. So maybe this is a nice reminder to, to remember someone who has passed that had meaning in your life, that made you happy, and all, all it could take would be sitting down with a cup of coffee and thinking about a happy time or a pleasant memory, and um, taking that good feeling, that good, warm, nostalgic feeling, and bringing it to center. Signs from heaven. Sometimes we can be oblivious, but I think that there are signs every day that uh, people are out there watching and maybe gently kind of um, uh, sending you some signals like to take care of yourself. You know, heavenly aspects and the universe and divine source, they want the humans to be happy they want us to feel happiness and fulfillment and contentment and love and love for all. And so um, think past this, think of someone in your past who has passed that made you happy and brought you joy. And I think it's a wonderful, warm feeling um, to reconnect with that and to bring it to surface because again, lives are busy. We deal in the here and now, we deal in the present, and life continues to move on. But there's always a, a thought, which is to just don't forget the ones that have, have gone before. You know, part of your legacy, part of your life, not to forget them and what they meant to you. And to keep a place in your heart for them. And then finally, I would like to pull a thematic card for the week where we can meditate on this thought and just get a sense of what other messages Divine Source or Spirit wants us to know in order for us to stay in balance. Perfection. Interesting word, perfection. Because, you know, fruits and vegetables are perfect and food is perfect. That is grown. 
uh, and the soil with your bare hands. And to me, that's pretty perfect. But to strive for perfection in life is maybe not the wisest thing. Because if you're always looking to be perfect, you know, it's, you're, it's never going to be perfect. And therefore, you're going to feel stuck because it's not the perfect way that you're imagining. You have to let it go. You have to do your best and you have to get things out. Get things out into the world. So if you are creative, if you make videos, if you write music, if you write books, you know, there's no such thing as perfect because perfect never ends. It's just the continuum of you keep, keep working on it and working on it and working on it because it's not perfect. Well, you have to let that notion go. And so funny that this came up because it was just in a conversation recently about perfection is the enemy of good. And so, so to seek perfection is something that can stifle your creativity and your progress because you're never going to feel that it's good enough. And, you know, you have to just do your best and then let it go. Put it out there and see what comes out of it. Um, when we strive for perfection so much in our lives, it's exhausting, it's tiring, it's draining because it's just chasing, chasing something that is impossible to really have. So just do your best. You know, another wonderful anecdote, um, just to share in, in terms of for the people who are the perfectionists out there. And it's about um, telling a friend that, uh, you know, you've gone back to school and you're working, you work a full-time job and at night you're working until two in the morning to write the perfect paper. Now, whether you get the A or the C, you're still gonna get your degree. You're still gonna be able to get a job. And ultimately, is the time spent trying to make a perfect paper going to really make the difference at the outset. So it'd be like, listen, you get your certificate, you get your degree, you get your, um, you know, your uh, exams. Do what you need to do to be able to move to the next step. Just because you get a perfect score or the perfect paper, um, it may get you a piece of paper from the university or from wherever, but ultimately in life, it's going to be just another piece of paper. Now, some may disagree with that and feel that you have to get straight A's in order to get into colleges and, and that nature, but um, at a certain point, you have to find the balance for yourself where you're doing a great job and probably really good is good enough versus perfect. So, interesting that this came up today. So my takeaways for this reading for this week, really it's the non-judgmental ju non and the listening. To try to listen to people with openness, realness, authenticity, and with compassion, and also to be aware of this, of how you speak and how you talk to others um, in your everyday interactions. So I hope that you found something here that helped you and uh, that you can work on for this week. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, or comment. If you're new to this channel um, and you like this style of reading, um, please subscribe and click on the bell notification so that you can uh, um, have other types of readings just sent to you easily so that you don't miss anything. And uh, it's a great way to show support 